Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon and we're gonna talk about social media. We're gonna talk about Twitter. We're gonna talk about breaking news and breaking brains. Elon Musk is breaking people's brains. Now he's being investigated by the SEC over Twitter. Okay, so if you ever wondered <laughs> how important Twitter was, and I kept telling people this, did you guys listen? I told you, I said, Twitter is a critical node. Twitter is a critical node and the powers that be are not gonna let Elon Musk saunter away with it so easily. They've been attacking him nonstop since he bought or even before he closed the deal on the platform. Now, that being said, I'm not a fan of everything that, that X is doing currently, but they are really reaching to make him look as bad as they possibly can because they hate it because he broke the ecosystem. And I'm, I'm gonna talk a little bit about that because I've got some perspective on this as someone who's been on the internet pretty much since the beginning of websites and the World Wide Web as we know it, and somebody who uh, has worked on websites for a number of years and all, all of that. And I saw kind of the rise and the fall, basically, of social media. And I think we're gonna return to, I'd like to see us return to anyway, a decentralized internet, which uh, Insider says it once, but the problem with the decentralized internet is you can't censor it. You can't you can't deplatform someone as easily if if they're existing in multiple little mini pockets of internet, and you can't monetize people as effectively if everybody's not using the same thing. But it does feel like we're kind of going back to the roots of the internet, the wild west of the internet, and um, that is by design. Uh, again, you have people like Elon Musk that have been around for a very long time online and um, lots of other people. I know, uh, I think Cory Doctorow uh, put a post up the other day and I thought it was pretty interesting. He's talking about the inshittification of Google and what Google has become compared to what they used to be. And the entire internet has become inshittified. That's his word, inshittified. It has. It has become very corporate. Uh, it's become very locked down. And now we've got the government getting involved. And the more the government gets involved, the more it starts to feel like China, okay? So we're gonna talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe. Please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants, guys. Uh, no woohoos today. Geeky is uh, sitting this video out. Uh, so I think first I'm gonna talk about the Elon Musk situation, and then I'm gonna talk about what is going on with social media. So the SEC is suing to force Elon Musk to testify to testify in a Twitter probe. According to CNBC, the SEC is suing Elon Musk, claiming the owner of X did not comply with a subpoena to testify. Uh, Musk failed to appear for testimony on September 15th. They said in a lawsuit on Thursday, the case is tied to Musk's purchase of Twitter last year and the stock trading hmm, surrounding the acquisition. Hmm. Hmm. Attorneys representing the SEC alleged in a legal alleged in a legal filing released in the Northern District of California that Musk failed to appear for a September 15th testimony as required by subpoena, which the attorney said was served to the Tesla CEO in May of 2023. Uh, the SEC said the investigation is tied to whether anyone committed security fraud in purchasing Twitter shares last year as Musk was buying stock in the company. Musk closed his acquisition of Twitter, now known as X, in October in a deal worth uh, roughly $44 billion. Yeah, you can't even change the sign on the HQ, can you, without people, without people uh, making headlines about it. Uh, Musk's ongoing refusal to comply with the SEC's administrative subpoena is hindering and delaying the SEC staff's investigation to determine whether violations of the federal securities laws have occurred. The attorneys wrote in the complaint, accordingly, the SEC now asked the court to compel Musk to appear for investigative testimony. They said they've been trying to meet with them and uh, <laughs> they've been trying to meet with them and he won't meet with them. These are good faith efforts. Um, they said that they wanted to meet with them in, in Texas uh, and he wouldn't do it. Uh, Musk's attorney, Alex Spiro, said the complaint that the SEC has already taken Mr. Musk's testimony multiple times in this misguided investigation, enough is enough. Enough is enough. 
Um, the SEC lawyers claim that Musk believed that the commission was using the subpoena as a me method to harass him, thus justifying his decision to not comply. So, look, th there are going to be all kinds of uh, legal proceedings around Twitter. I, I have told people before, Twitter was probably, even though like normal people didn't use Twitter, Twitter was probably the most critical node of any social media platform on the internet. I think Twitter had more power. Uh, sometimes they talk about power brokers and sometimes it's not numbers. Usually there is, you know, when you talk about somebody who is a power broker, uh, a lot of times the most powerful people in a particular industry, you've never heard of them. Uh, I think about the comic book industry in particular, and people working in the graphic novel space. And I can tell you like three or four of the most popular people working in graphic novels, you've never heard of them, but they're editors or agents or, you know what I'm saying? Marketing people, but you've never heard of them. You hear about the people that they promote or the people that they push to, you know, superstardom, but you've never heard of these people. And that's, that's by design. I, you know, I, I do know a couple of them, they don't want to be bothered. <laughs> you know, they don't want to be in the limelight. They just want to get books out or whatever. But this is kind of the deal with Twitter too. Like grandma doesn't use Twitter. Normal people don't use Twitter, but powerful people use Twitter. Those in the know use Twitter and the media uses Twitter and they know how to manipulate Twitter or they knew how to manipulate Twitter in the past tense. They can't manipulate X like they used to manipulate Twitter. What would happen is, People could be singled out for cancellation and multiple media outlets would pick up on, on uh, the tweet, the cancellation tweet, and they would write articles about it. And the next thing you know, it seemed like the entire world was against you when in reality, it was a tempest in a teapot. It didn't become a big deal until it hit like, you know, an NBC news or something like that. Like so-and-so tweeted, whatever. You know, Gina Carano was a perfect example of that. I think if her tweets had just stayed on Twitter, Nobody would have cared. I mean, obviously, the terminally online, the perpetually offended, they would care. But like normal people wouldn't have cared. I don't think she would have been fired, but it hit the media. And the media had Twitter locked down. The government, as we found out through the Twitter files, had Twitter locked down. But the media in particular is very, very salty. This is The Verge. Apparently, uh, they are no longer showing headlines in links to articles. Okay, they're showing the uh, the verge.com and you'll have to actually type in the headline or something above the image because uh, Elon Musk thinks it looks better. And I've seen this. I've seen articles out there with without the headlines. I thought it was kind of weird. I mean, personally, I would scroll through it and I would think that it's just a photo. I wouldn't think that it was actually a link. Like there's no indication that this is actually a link. That looks like they're just crediting the verge. This I know is actually an article. Right. And I, I pers personal opinion, personal opinion. I think there needs to be more of an indication somewhere that this is actually an outbound link or an article. But whatever. I didn't pay forty four billion dollars for it, so I can't I can't tell them what to do. Right. But what's going on is they're freaking out. There, there are a lot of things going on in the digital media space right now. And Twitter was kind of the glue that held all of these uh, millennial websites together for years. Uh, Facebook too, in the case of like BuzzFeed, but really Twitter, it's where journalists talk to each other. It's where journalists would retweet each other. It's where they would get leads for stories. It's where they found out who to cancel or who to promote. And people were literally getting hired based on Twitter clout, even if in the real world, nobody knew who they were. I can't tell you how many people got jobs in animation or comics because of their uh, Twitter follower account. Like, and I think that a lot of companies followed uh, the lead of these journalists and hiring people that they thought were important because, oh, look, they've got, you know, 750,000 Twitter followers. Never mind that most of them are probably fake. A lot of them are sock puppet accounts. In the early days, you could buy Twitter followers like nothing. I mean, I would watch people literally overnight go up like 20, 30,000 followers because it was so easy to buy bot accounts. And so people were making it out like, they were a much bigger deal than they were. And then companies were hiring them based on this uh, false assumption that these people were huge. 
It's like, no, they might be huge on Twitter, but Twitter is obviously not the real world, but the, most people don't care, but the journalists care. And then they would blast it out there. So Twitter is the glue that held all of this together. This is how they promoted their stories, how they promote each other, whatever. And Elon Musk has broken it. Okay, so the reason they're angry, I don't even think they're that angry about Elon Musk's politics. They were not happy that Musk came in and took away their precious blue checks and made you pay for it. Uh, you can still buy a gold check for $1,000 a month, by the way. You know, if you want to do that, you can, you can do that. They weren't happy about that. They weren't happy that he reinstated some problematic people. Uh, they weren't happy that it's uh, uh, harder to get kicked off of Twitter now for having a dissenting opinion. So now we've actually, we're actually starting to see what people really think. Twitter, you know, was a microcosm of far left politics for at least the last couple of years. I'd say since 2016, 2017, especially. It never used to be that bad. You know, when it first started, it was pretty neutral. And, uh, you know, then it just, it really came off the rails, but we saw how many people they had working at this company too. They had way too many people working at this company. And a lot of them were activists, obviously, and not, not developers, not people that had actual value, you know? Uh, so Musk correctly got rid of a bunch of them and they screamed and they're angry. So they're going to, you know, phone up their friends in the media, those that are left because digital media is imploding. And they're going to be like, wow, Elon Musk is a meanie. Let's get him on everything we possibly can get him on. Um, so, what is going on now is that all social media is falling apart. It's all fake. And these websites, most of them, live and die by social media. It's basically a parasitic relationship. This is why they're so pissed off. It's a parasitic relationship because they, they post their stuff to you know Facebook and Twitter and whatever, and that's how they you know boost it. Or um, in the case of Facebook, it was very easy to promote your website for a long time, you could literally just pay to boost posts. And now it doesn't work like it used to, because now they have a little warning. Hey, you're about to leave Facebook. You know, do, are you sure you really want to do that? Are you sure you really want to leave Facebook? Um, so they've made it a lot harder to promote your website. So we've got that going on. You've got journos being pissed off that they lost Twitter. Uh, they can't really get any traction on Facebook. And now a lot of them are getting laid off. Uh, they're getting, they're blaming AI completely, but it's not all AI's fault. The views are not there. The ad revenue is not there. Companies are no longer spending the money they were spending on websites because they're finding out that a lot of the traffic was fake too. It wasn't just the social media profiles. It was the traffic that's fake. And as the money starts to run out, I'm looking at some of these like big nerd sites and I'm seeing very, very little engagement on social media because I think they were paying to boost uh, their content. And they don't have the money to do that anymore. But, you know, sure, let's just blame it all on AI. Now, speaking of AI, Google is going to eat their lunch. I did a whole video and you can go find it on how Google is going to destroy a lot of these websites because they're effectively scraping content. You know, so they're getting it from all sides. So, yeah, they're going to go really hard in the paint on guys like Elon Musk. They're disrupting the system. The thing is, is I think it needs to happen. This needed to happen years ago. I think part of the reason that we have so many problems online, I've said it before, is that social media only cares about engagement. It doesn't care if it's good or bad engagement. It only cares that posts are being seen, posts are being interacted with. You know, uh, a person getting dogpiled on social media is still interaction, and the algorithm loves it because the more people come back to the website, the more ads they can show you. You know, people love a good brawl. They love a freaking dumpster fire. We didn't have nearly the problems that we had, uh, I don't think, online because we had communities set up and people were kind of just, you know, would hang out with their tribe and they didn't interact with very, you know, uh, different people very often. And, uh, you know, if you had a forum for this kind of person or that kind of person, whatever, you'd go there or, uh, you know, in this case, you know, private discords or whatever the hell it is, right? So we weren't thrown in front of each other and, and, and thrown into each other's paths, like we have been. And I think, again, that was all designed. Uh, it was basically monetizing outrage. People say that YouTubers monetize outrage. I would say all of social media monetizes outrage. Um, that, you know, it wants you to be angry. It wants you to be engaged. It wants you to keep scrolling, even if it's doom scrolling, because they can show you ads. But I thought this article was actually pretty smart. And um, this is people leaving big platforms for smaller online circles. It's the start of a new, healthier era of social media. It's actually 
rolling the internet back about 10 or 15 years. Again, back when if you had a community, you had to build it yourself and it might not have been as big as like Facebook. Facebook destroyed so many forums, by the way. You know, the smart people held on to their websites and they held on to their forums, but these social media companies wanted people to effectively give up their own websites, their own corners of the internet and, and uh, go in on their platforms. Now we're seeing what happens. <laughs> you know, we see what happens. But, um, you know, this was basically singing the praises of Mastodon, but they're not wrong. Okay, this is coming from Insider. Uh, step into the pluriverse. Major platforms such as Facebook have long abandoned their goal to bring the world closer together in favor of profit-motivated and engagement-inducing designs that keep us hooked and drive growth. Uh, according to Ben Grosser, an artist and faculty associate at Harvard, um, a flood of research has found that this shift in the company's priorities has shaped everyday users for the worse. Absolutely. I've been saying this. I think a lot of the anger is manufactured. I think a lot of it is manufactured online. And I think we have different powers trying to keep people angry, trying to keep people at each other's throats. And social media is a huge, huge driver of that. Now, whether or not you believe the government is driving that, which they could be, or you believe corporations are driving, you know, they're driving the anger train, that, that could be too. I think it's a mutually beneficial relationship. The corporations get to profit off of the anger you know, and uh, unfortunately, that is about the only way people get found online or it has been for the last couple of years. You know, people that are milk toast don't get seen. They get talked over or they get harassed off the Internet. They decide that they don't want to be on the Internet anymore because it's a freaking dumpster fire. One study found social media could cause an increase in eating disorders and poor body image in men and women. My chin's not as big as that guy with that big chin, that meme. And researchers have theorized that by lumping people with uh, disparate views together in a faceless melee, the technology that was supposed to bring us together has made us more polarized. That is 100% true. I believe this. Broadly speaking, social media is always on. Nature is unnatural. We aren't supposed to talk so much. And posting in front of thousands of people every day causes our ability to communicate, to break down. There are some people that, I mean, I know they, they talk about how they talk big online, but in person you know, they're complete pussies. There are people that I, I have run into that they tweet and tweet and tweet and tweet and tweet, or they post massive, massive missives on Facebook. And then you meet them at like a convention or something. And you can't get two words out of them because they're socially awkward. They're just like totally broken. Um, so this guy is saying, uh, for all its flaws, I've depended on big platforms. My job as a freelance journalist, here we go, hinges on a public audience. My ability to keep tabs on developing news. Again, this is why they're so pissed off that Twitter is broken. The fatigue I have felt is therefore partly fueled by another more pressing concern. Which social media should I bank on? They're going through some of the options here. Um, but they're saying that there's going to be a pluriverse consisting of uh, platforms and an ecosystem of very small online platforms, private communities, and niche services that host the kind of intimate or interest-specific conversations poorly served by today's digital public sphere. I think we're going to have our, our Walmart social media, and then we're going to have kind of our uh, forums again. The problem is so many people that spend a lot of time online don't know how to run their own damn websites. So they're, they're always going to be dependent on somebody else's service to get their views out there. Uh, I have a lot more respect. Even if I disagree with them, I have a lot more respect for someone that has actually built their own forum or built their own blog. You know, the people that are uh, in charge of a lot of these websites now, they did not build the website. They didn't build the website. They moved into a warm seat and it shows because, you know, but uh, yeah, they're talking about rebooting social media, how this needs to happen. It's a pretty interesting article. You might not agree with everything. Uh, that they're saying, but I think this is the future. I think this is what the future is going to look like. But the problem is, is that if you have a more niche social media experience, it's going to be a lot harder for the government or corporations to control you. Sounds pretty good to me. I don't know about you, but uh, anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.